So if anyone serves Jesus, let him follow Jesus. So when we serve Jesus, we want to have a close relationship with Jesus. And where Jesus is, my servant will be also. That, that servant of God will be with Jesus all the time. And then if anyone serves God, the Father will honor him. So that is the grace of God. Anyone serving, serving God, God will honor him. And then God will res respect him and place him on a high place and so that he can do more and more things for God and give him wisdom and opportunities and provision and, and the joy of serving God and all these things. So when we have this close relationship with him, and obey Him and serve Him. He will honor us and He will bless us. So this is the grace to motivate people to serve God. Okay, and then Matthew 20, um, 25, the second and third parable are about serving God. The second parable is about uh, that the three servants, they were given, uh, one was given five talents and the other one two talents and one is one talent. And the, one, the ones with the five and two talents, they earn back the money. But then the one who has one talent bury it and then did not do anything with it. Okay, so the one, Lord, you deliver me to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents. So that's the grace of God. He give us the talent first. He give us the money we have, our abilities, our spiritual gift. And our opportunities, all these are given by God. That is the grace of God. And then I have gained five more talents. So that's obedience, that we we'll obey God and serve God with what He has given us. And then we produce fruits. And His Lord said to him, well done. So that's the grace of God. That, will, that God will praise us and He will say, you're well done. And God appreciates that and He remembers that. And He'll, he'll reward us. Good and faithful servant. So that is obedience. That he is a good servant. That is good. That means in his life is is full of goodness and kindness and love. And faithful servant. That you have been faithful. That you have been obedience. Obedience to serve God. That is uh, his faithful. So what we do is in green. Is the obedience. Now when we can discern grace and obedience and warning. When you read the Bible, you can mark the Bible with these three colors. Grace, you know, red, green, and blue. Red is God's grace. Green is what we do to obey Him. And then blue is the warning. And then when you get used to that, then whenever you see any Bible verse, immediately you can see the grace there. Immediately you can see the obedience and the warning there. And then if it's not there, you find the opposite. If grace is not there, you find the opposite of the warning. If warning is not there, you find the grace, and then the opposite of the, of the grace is the warning. Now let me explain. For instance, uh, if you have the words that, you know, uh, that Jesus said, I don't know you, that those people who, who are lawless, that Jesus said, I don't know you. Then the opposite is Jesus knows us. Those who obey Him, have a good relationship with Him, then Jesus knows Him. So that's a good thing. And it's God who give us faith, give us strength to obey Him. And God will appreciate and remember what we've done and reward us. So this is uh, the grace of God. Now I hope by this time you are familiar with grace and obedience and warning. Obedience and warning are the law. So gain is uh, obedience. At the same time, it's also grace because it's God's grace to enable us to gain more. So sometimes one word can be more than one meaning. So it's God who works in us to, so that we can gain, find more talents. And then the Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you so faithful over a few things as obedience. I will make you ruler over many things. That's that the grace of God that He uh, make Him rule over many things in heaven. So one day in a new heaven and new earth, we'll be given responsibilities also. But it's responsibilities with pleasure. 
that will be ruling over many things in heaven. It is, it's a pleasure to serve God in heaven. Enter into the joy of your Father, of your Lord. So we also will, will enter His joy. So that is the grace of God, that God is full of joy. So when we're in God's presence, it's full of joy. Now, the two necessary fruits here are being good and being faithful. So, so good, that means that we are uh, kind and loving and honest. So, that's a life quality. And the faithful is being faithful to what God told us to do. So, when we are good in our life and also faithful to do what God tells us to do, then God will say, well done. And He'll make us rule over many things and we can enter in the joy of the Lord. Now the Bible, actually uh, from the Bible, we can uh, say that also uh, because in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about in the resurrection, some are like the sun and some are like the moon and some are like the stars and one star is not different from the other star. And so are we when we are raised from the dead. So one day when we're raised from the dead, that some people will be like the sun, and some people will be like the moon, and some people will be like the stars. And that means that, that one day we'll have different degrees of glory. And the glory of God includes His joy and His love. So those people who serve God uh, faithfully, then they will be shining like the sun. Now, at the same time, their life is good and they are obedient to God and they love God and they honor God all the time. They give glory to God all the time. They glorify God all the time. And then they will be shining like the sun and then they will be full of the, you know, God's uh, uh, glory includes His goodness in uh Exodus 33, Moses asked God to show him his glory and God said, I'll let my goodness pass in front of you. So God's glory includes his goodness, all the good things about God. So when a person is filled like the sun with the glory of God, then he is filled with the goodness of God, the kindness of God, the love of God, the joy of the Lord. So they will be filled with the love of God all the time. And I hunger for that, and I desire that for eternity. So I hope that you all desire that, and that you will spend more time loving God and serving God and glorifying God. And God is very, very happy with you. So, serve God means to glorify Him and blessing people in Jesus in daily life and in ministry, not just as ministers, but in our daily life. So all Christians can serve God by telling people about Jesus, by praying for people, by helping people in Jesus' name, by uh, being kind to people, being nice to people, all these are, the, uh, are serving God, and God is very happy. Now, and then the servant who had the one talent buried it, and then Jesus says, So you ought to have deposited my money with the bar bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. So this uh, section has a lot of warning. First, there is the instruction. You ought to have deposited my money into the banker. So that could mean you, you could have paid offering and tithe. You could have deposited my money with the bankers and my coming, then you receive back the interest. So when you offer, do the offering, then the, then the interest will come to you. But then this is an unprofitable servant, so that's the warning. So I hope that nobody is an unprofitable servant. And then also they will be thrown into the outer darkness. And then there will be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is hell. This is outer darkness. And weeping and gnashing of teeth is not heaven or some people say this there is heaven and earth and then also there is a place of gnashing of teeth there's no such third place the bible doesn't talk about the third place the bible just talks about these people go to eternal damnation uh, punishment and those people go to eternal life just two choices there is no third choice 
nor is there their purgatory, that the Catholic teaches that there is a purgatory. There is no such thing. So, the unprofitable servant, the this unprofitable servant was thrown into the outer darkness and uh, thrown into hell. So this tells us that it's necessary to serve God. If a person buries his talents and doesn't serve God at all, then he might have zero serving, zero uh, goodness of serving God, then he can be thrown into hell. Now, we're not saved by serving God. But if a Christian has none of those fruits, he doesn't repent of his sin, he doesn't uh, trust in Jesus as his Lord, he doesn't pray and doesn't respond, you know, have a good relationship with Jesus, he doesn't love Jesus, he doesn't obey Him, and then He doesn't serve Him. None of these things He does. He doesn't have the life at all in His heart. Then He won't have eternal life. He, he'll go into hell forever. That's terrible. Okay, and then the third parable is about the, the sheep and the goats. And the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed on my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the king will answer and say to him, As surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. So these people, they have done the good things to, the, to Jesus' brothers. And then Jesus said, Blessed on my father. You are blessed on my father. That's the grace of God. God bless you. And inherit. You can inherit the kingdom prepared for you. So that is also the grace of God that He has prepared for you. So you can inherit something God has prepared for you. That's also grace from the foundation of the world. So it's from the beginning God has already prepared for you. And the king will answer and say, As much as you did it, do it, uh, did it to one of this, the least of these my brethren. So that's obedience. To, obedience is what we do. Grace is what God does to bless us. Punishment is God, what, what God does to punish us, to warn us. It's also warning, it's also from God. Obedience is God telling us to obey, obey Him. So it's, the instruction is from God, but then action to obedience is from us. So when we do the good things, when we help them, we pray for them, we visit them, we feed them, we help them spiritually, all these things, uh, we, we do out of a sincere heart. Now those people in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, those people who prophesy and cast out demons and do wonders, they, because they don't do it with the heart, they don't serve God from the heart. If they serve God from the heart, they love God and love people and serve God, then Jesus will know them. But some people, they just, they're not serving God from the heart. Then they, then Jesus doesn't know them. It's not from the heart. If anyone does any good works from his heart, then he will also have the other fruit. If anyone just, you know, the, uh, remember the fruits repent. When a person truly repents, then for sure he will obey God. And a person trusts in Jesus, for sure he will have the other fruit to, to love God and obey God and serve God. And if anyone, the third one is to... Uh, have a close relationship with God, then God will produce all the good works. And to love God, then God will also uh, produce good works in him. When we obey him, obey God, that comes from the, the, whole, the move of the Holy Spirit, then God will also motivate him to do other things. And then when he serves God, he has the presence of God, and it's God who changes him to serve God. And then God will remember that. And, and it, he produces the other fruits. So when we have a sincere fruit in one area, it will also we have fruit in the other areas too. Now this is the warning. Then he also said to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. Then he'll answer them, saying, As surely I say to you, as inasmuch as you do not do it to one of the least of these, you do not do it to me. 
and this will go in away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So they are cursed by God. They have to go into the everlasting fire, prepare. Also, this is warning. God has prepared this for the devil and his angels. And then you did not do it. So he warned them that you did not do it. Do it to one of these little ones. You did not do it to me. So that's the warning. You are not serving God. And then they will go into everlasting punishment. That is the warning, a serious warning. But the righteous, that's obedience, that they are, have been obeying God. They will go into eternal life. So those who serve God, so we motivate people and tell them, it's God who mo motivates you to do evangelism, to help other Christians to build up the church. So it's the Holy Spirit moving in your heart. That is the grace of God. And then when you respond to God and say, help me to obey you and serve you, then God is very happy. And also God will continue to speak to us to tell people about Jesus. He will continue to speak to us to try to uh, strengthen other Christians, to pray for other Christians, to pray for other people, so that the Holy Spirit would work in us. And then God will remember, this is the grace of God, He'll remember and He'll bless us now and for eternity. Now He'll bless us with joy and strength and with a provision and wisdom so that we can serve God more. So He'll give us blessings now and eternity. And then for those who disobey Him, they go into eternal punishment. That is heavy warning. So we should be motivated mainly, 99%, by the grace of God when we, it's God who moves in us so that I can serve Him. And whenever I serve Him, He's very, very ha happy. And He'll bless me for, for sure. And He'll strengthen me. And He'll use me so I can be very, very happy. I can be serving God with joy and strength. So, so uh, that, those are the grace of God to motivate us. But there is a warning that if they disobey God totally, if they don't serve God at all, they can lose salvation. Now, when, how about some people who obey to a certain extent and disobey to a certain extent? Then we say, what you do for God, for God is good. So we appreciate that and say, God will uh, remember this and God blesses you and God will give you strength. Now, but your sins can give the devil a foothold. And also in, Math, uh, in John 5, 14, Jesus said, do, do not sin anymore, lest the worst thing will happen to you. So any kind of sin will bring bad things happening to you. Now what I mean is like this. When we yell at people, when we are angry with people, it will break up relationship. It will break up our ministry, break up our family. So we tell them when we sin, there are bad consequences. So that are the serious things. And also when we sin, we give the devil a foothold and he'll come in to steal, kill, and destroy. And destroy our life, destroy our reputation. Destroy our family, destroy our ministry. He will destroy everything when we come to God. I mean, I'm sorry. When we sin, when we don't come to God, then, then the punishment will come. So we tell people, you know, we tell people don't sin because if not, the serious, the bad things will happen to you. Okay, now, so we have gone through this uh, six fruits necessary fruits of salvation and this fruit what I mean is uh, most messages are within this six groups so all the Christian life mostly fall into these six groups these are the six areas that we are supposed to do so for instance you know Serving God, we can be talking about evangelism, we can be talking about praying for people or training people, pray for people. So, so many, there can be many messages that fall into the area of serving God. So we can be talking about building up the church together, we can be talking about uh, helping the poor and doing evangelism to them, and also talking about uh, serving God with music, with praise and worship. Now when we train people to serve God by praising God. We want to tell them, when you praise God from all your heart, when you love God with all your heart, God is very happy with you. And He'll bless your whole life. He'll, 
he'll uh, uh, remember what you do. And also when you praise God with joy and the people are touched by you and then they will also obey God and that is the fruit of your good works. And also the fruit also is that you'll have reward and God will remember everything you do and, and, and God will reward you. So whenever we talk about things that we do, like how to reach out to the neighbor, neighborhood, how to, um, how to encourage those who are uh, depressed, help those who are filled with this evil spirit, and uh, how to do inner healing, you know, all these are serving God. How to do inner healing, how to lead praise and worship and lead, lead uh, meetings, how to preach, uh, how to build up churches, uh, branch churches, branch churches. So all these things that we motivate people to do to serve God, then we tell them that it's God who moves you. So when, whenever we talk about God's grace, we first talk about God is working in your heart so that you serve God. God is changing your heart so you serve God. God is moving in you. And then whenever you obey Him, God is very happy and He'll reward you and He'll give you more strength so that you can serve Him more. And then when we talk about obeying God, uh, it can be talking about honor your parents, love your children, teach your children, um, do not sin and uh, be honest, uh, be kind to people, uh, give offering. Uh, so anything we do to obey Him, to pray, to... Um, now s uh, some of these messages can fall into di two different, two or more different areas. Like praying, it's close relationship with God and also it's obedience to God. Um, to obey the Bible, whenever we read the Bible, we understand the Bible, analyze the Bible, and apply it to our life. So I hope you all understand that all areas of Christian life, we can uh, motivate people with God's grace. So we, we don't just tell people, you have to pray, you keep praying, you know, if you don't pray, you don't get the blessings of God. It, then it's just warning. So we have to discern what is warning. Warning is telling people, if you don't do it, don't obey God, what are the consequences? Those are the warning. What are the bad consequences? That those are the warnings. We don't just tell people what to do. That is instruction or obedience. Don't just tell people what to do. But we tell them when they obey, God is very happy with them and bless them. And also it's God who changes their life. God who changes their life so that they can obey God. So when we talk about, if we preach about um, evangelism, we can say, after we are saved, we have a heart to save people. When we see people, we want to tell them Jesus is good. Jesus can give you eternal life, and Jesus can bless your whole life and give you joy and strength. We want to tell people that is already glorifying God. That is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So God is changing our life, and then we, if we obey Him, He'll, He's voice becomes stronger and stronger and clearer and clearer and we'll hear clearly what we should do. We'll be reminded to do evangelism, reminded to strengthen other Christians, to be kind to them, to help them. So we'll be reminded and God will give us the wisdom to do it, give us the strength to do it. So we want to when we talk about grace, we want to talk about what God does to help us, what God does to transform us and to help us to obey Him, to give us wisdom, to give us provision and strength and the opportunity to serve Him. And it's Him who changes us and give us the, the uh, motivation to serve God. So I hope that you understand whatever we preach about in our Christian life, we can tell people what to do. And then we can tell them the motivation from God's grace. It's God who changes you. God gives you the motivation. When you obey Him, He's very, very happy. He will smile with you. He will give you blessings. He will strengthen you. And your ministry will be blessed by God. So whatever area we talk about, any message, we 
uh, in these six areas or any other message, uh, like if there are some passages that just explain a passage, actually any passage would fall into one of these areas or more than one of these areas. Um, for instance, you know, we talk about Jesus' life and how he performed miracles and then and we can encourage people that you can also pray for people for miracles, then it falls into the area of serving God and obedience, that you do what Jesus tells you to do and to serve God. And, and when we talk about um, how we hunger for God, that is loving God, and how we also, if, uh, it's also a close relationship. And if we talk about uh, be kind to people, that's obedience. When we talk about be honest, that's obedience. And when we talk about um, that we help people, that is obedience and also serving God. So uh, almost any message, any message of uh, pastors would fall into what they tell people to do would fall into one of these areas. Okay, so I demonstrated that we can use God's grace to motivate these people. Uh, we sometimes will have to warn them, but the warning should not be the main part of the message. So now, and also instruction. Now some people, when they give instruction, they use the word must or have to. Now I want to avoid that because that has a, uh, a sense of pressure. Instead, I will say this. This is how I say it. When you love God, God is very happy. You, I use the word when. When you love God, when you pray to God, God is very happy and He'll come to bless you. Instead of telling people, you have to pray. I don't want to use the word have to. It's like, I don't want to say to my wife, you have to wait for me. You have to help me. You have to cook. You have to do this. I don't want to tell my wife that. That gives people pressure. So we don't tell people you have to. So in your mess messages, don't use the word must or have to. Instead, you can say, when you do this, God is very happy, and it's God who changes you so that you obey Him. So it's God who motivates you, and then whenever you obey Him, God is very happy, and He'll bless you. Okay. So I hope that you see that in all areas of our Christian life, we can motivate people with God's grace. So um, some, of you, some of you just wrote messages about salvation. Now, that is good, but then for the assignment, I want you not to talk about salvation. The reason is because you already know the grace of God there is Jesus dying for us, and God also, Jesus also moves in the heart to give us salvation. I want you to talk about different areas of Christian walk. Now, we need to talk about, preach about salvation. When we preach about salvation, we want to preach about how God moves in our heart to change us so that we'll believe in Jesus, how God draws us to believe in Jesus, how God prepares the right people to evangelize to us, how God uses God's Word to move in our hearts so that we are attracted to obey Him. So we can do, talk about dif different areas of Christian uh, God's grace. But some people wrote about salvation, it just talk about Jesus dying on the cross and give us forgiveness, and that's all. They cannot think of the other things that God does to us to draw us to Him. So I want you to practice doing these different areas of Christian walk, how God motivates us to obey Him, how God changes us so that we'll obey Him, and how He motivates us and He's pleased with us when we obey Him, and how He'll reward us and give us strength and more opportunities to serve God, and He'll remember what, he, what we do and He'll reward us in this life and in the future. Okay, God bless you, and um, so I hope that you understand this. Now, if you have a problem hearing everything well, you can go online and watch it again, because it will be saved in Facebook, and in the future it will be in uh, YouTube, that you can hear it again, okay? God bless you, let us pray. Let us be motivated by God's grace all the time. I hope you understand this. If you have any questions, please send to me. And because, you know, I've talked about this because many people do assignments and the assignments are not satisfactory.
that it's a lot of have to, must. You have to do this, you have to do that. It's always telling people what to do. Instead of telling them what God is doing to motivate you to change. And how, how God changes us so that we'll change. And how God sees our good works and remembers and, and reward us. And give us more opportunities so that we can serve God more. Okay? Let us pray. And you can stand up and relax and then let the Holy Spirit sway you. Okay? Stand up. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. You're a wonderful God. You're a good God. You're kind. You're full of goodness. You motivate us to obey you. You motivate us to love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so close to us. You live in us. When we live in you, you always live in us and will bear much fruit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. We love you. We adore you. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the joy of the Lord. Fill us Fill us with strength. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, for your kindness. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful, so wonderful. You're so good and so kind. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. We thank you. Please motivate us with your grace. So help us to remember your grace. Think about what you've done to help us, what you've done to bless us. Thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful. You're wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now in your prayer, did you sense the swaying of the Holy Spirit? Or uh, did you sense the peace of God, the love of God, the power of God? If you do, you can send it to me. Tell me. Okay, now you should have sent me the photos. I said you should take the photos while we are teaching, while I'm teaching in the session so you can show me teaching. Okay, God bless you. God be with you and please do your assignment so that you can learn from it. Um, so please follow my instruction of the outline of these messages, okay? If you don't have them, ask someone. I've sent, it, um, I've sent it many times already and I can send it again if you ask me again, okay? God bless you. Goodbye.